are hoping another transition here is going to get there eventually is Cyberpunk 20, 2077 because the game is not what everyone wanted yeah. to, to launch. Um, and, you know, although we were going to originally focus our whole episode to the Game Awards, it this was just such big news we couldn't really uh, yeah. put in the shadows for another week. We have to talk about the launch of Cyberpunk 2077 because – I think this is another case of a game being overhyped um, for players' expectations. What do you guys? Yeah. What were your? Have you? Okay, let's take so, a quick vote. Let's play sure. the game. I, I've I been playing it. I put yeah, a lot of hours into it. Very, very much into it. Malik, you, you're playing it too, right? You're, no, I'm actually. I've only been watching it because I was going to buy it, but mm -hmm. after I saw all of the bugs and everything, oh. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a big patch because I was. Okay, I was gotcha. fully prepared to buy it and download it, but I, I can't uh, reasonably justify spend it. the money. Yeah, yeah. to so, justify spending that fair. money. So let's let's go over this. Here's the statement that was put out uh, early in the morning. I think today, like really yeah. early in the morning, or I guess technically mm -hmm. yesterday, whatever you want to consider it. Uh, this was put out officially by Cyberpunk's Twitter account. It goes, dear gamers, which hell of a beginning. <laughs> but it's great. First it's of all, great way. Hell of a beginning. <laughs> first of all, we would like to start by apologizing to you for not showing the game on base last gen consoles before it premiered and in consequence, not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase. We should have paid more attention to making it play better on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Second, we will fix the bugs and crashes and improve the overall experience. The first round of updates has just been released, and the next one is coming within the next seven days. Expect more as we will update frequently whenever new improvements are ready. After the holidays, we'll continue working. We'll release two large patches, starting with patch number one in January. This will be followed by patch number two in February. Together, these should fix most of the prominent problems gamers are facing on last-gen consoles. We'll be informing you about the contents of each patch ahead of their release. They won't make the game on last gen look like it's running on a high spec PC or next gen console, but it will be closer to that experience than it is now. Finally, we would always we always like everyone who buys our games to be satisfied with their purchase. We would appreciate if you would give us a chance, but if you are not pleased with the game on your console and don't want to wait for updates, you can opt for a refund for your copy. For copies purchased digitally, please use the refund system of PSN or Xbox, respectively. For boxed versions, please try to get a refund at the store in which you bought the game. Should this not be possible, please contact us at, and then they leave their email uh, contact, which is help me refund at CG, cdprojectred.com, and we will mm -hmm. do our best to help you. Starting from today, you can contact us for a week up until December 21st, 2020. And this uh, is. This statement to me is like it's the statement they obviously had to make, but oh my god, they literally say we're sorry we lied and deceived you on how this game was gonna look on the last gen consoles. It this is brutal. It's bad. And and this is brutal. Also, too, they didn't why I I don't think a PR person read over this or drafted this because I'm reading this and there's so there's so many because like I my major is in PR. There's so many little things where they are admitting to fault and liability right. where they are opening themselves up to a hellstorm. They are basically yep. saying the game will not be ready and fully complete until February. That that yeah. and that's that's only on the next generation. And at the bottom when they say PS, PC gamers are going to get consistent updates. You're basically saying, hey, we knew that this game was not ready for last gen, really shouldn't be on last gen, but mm -hmm. we're going to leave it there anyways because we want the money and there will be enough people who don't remember or don't notice that you can do refunds that we'll still make some money off of them. Right. Sorry. It, it's so bad because usually, you know, this, <laughs> when you see something like this come out, you would want to hope that the developers were put under pressure by the publisher. CD Projekt Red, like <laughs> CD Projekt, they are the developer and the publisher. Like, yeah, this yeah. Is just like how, like you can't even put the excuse on like we were under like a tight, like lots of pressure from, you know, our um, publisher that this game has to go out yeah. for last gen. Um, although we were making this game for next gen, it's just such a uh, I, a bleep storm 
that it reminds me of No Man's Sky. And now, like, because we're going through this, we're going to have to talk, like, in a few months, maybe after yeah. February, yeah. or you know, see if they're able to recover <clears throat> like No Man's Sky did after all of their, you know, turmoil that right. they went through. Release. But well, I brought it up right before uh, like we started the the show proper. I said like they have so much in the pipeline now. They have two major patches scheduled for January, February. Not only that, but they also promised that they were going to have next gen optimization for the PS5 and Xbox Series X sometime in the near future, plus mm -hmm. a multiplayer. Like the fact that they now have to spend this additional two months and start, uh, well, not start, but continue uh, crunching just to get these two patches out, pushes everything down the pipeline. Like who knows by the time that we have the optimized version in our hands, like who's going to still be playing this game. This, That's this, is getting, this is getting weird to me. We're seeing too much of different studios get it wrong with a game and then inevitably make it good. And then they learn the next time around, but I right. don't know why studios aren't watching what other studios are doing, yeah. you know? Like, I don't they know why someone like CD Projekt Red didn't look at what happened with Crystal Dynamics and Avengers and was like, you know what? This game's delayed till next that. year. Yeah. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. This, the bad PR could have been avoided if they just stopped putting it. And I mentioned this on the podcast. You need to stop putting dates on the expected release date when you know that there are so many issues with your game. Yeah. But yeah. There's no reason that they should have continued to push for a 2020 release right. knowing that they've admitted to misleading a lot of uh, gamers out there into believing the game was ready for PS4 and Xbox One and they knew it wasn't. Now that they're feeling the rep repercussions, not only in bad PR, loss of faith from their gamers, yep. but also stock prices went hella down. Yeah. Yep. You're, yeah. you're not you know, going to be um, seeing uh, you know, the full uh, repercussions until well into the next two quarters of 2021 yep. Mm -hmm. yep. when yeah. investors start looking. Like, would you sign a new project? You know, if you want to go to CD Projekt Red and be like, hey, we want you to publish a game or sorry, develop a game for us. Um, would you like this is something now that I feel like they're going to have to make up so much in terms of credibility with not only gamers, but also their peers, uh, yeah. because yeah. it's just hand with bet, especially with the crunch and especially their team feeling the crunch so much so that they've decided they're still going to pay out their bonuses to their team. Yeah. Uh, because well, they realize it's so bad. Um, yeah. 100%. Regardless of the performance and the review scores that came right. out. The it's only thing I can, good. No, 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 go, go, go. I was going to say the only thing that I can think of to justify this mm -hmm. is that they are going with a, a rockstar GTA mentality because mm -hmm. they've mentioned multiplayer so early. They're thinking we have a great story. This is a, a, a beautifully realized world in terms of the narrative. Sure. We're missing some of the technical aspects. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that over time and then we'll re-release it again, but they're shooting for a, a, a multiplayer mode that is going to be MMO-esque. You know what yeah. I mean? That's the only mm -hmm. thing I can think of is their vision for cyberpunk because realistically the story was kind of already written for them. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the cyberpunk world has been around and it's so deep and rich and I can't imagine that they have been working on the tech consistently for the past eight years, and it turns out like this. This is this is like a two, three-year-old like work in progress. It seems yeah. like. And I feel like that may be a result. Uh, like, and I, you know, okay, with Mass Effect, it's gone through mm -hmm. so many issues. With Halo, it's gone through so many issues where like they pretty much need to start not almost from scratch, right? Yeah. Cyber went through that same uh, development nightmare as well and you bring up a good point caboose it's like i i don't understand why these studios just don't recognize the trend that's kind of plaguing uh, the gaming community yeah. in, uh, within the last you know two to three years um and i think that is a huge factor to do with crunch and you know we had lots of news about all these studios um putting yeah. that on their team that mm -hmm. you know although some studios may be doing things implementing this things this year to kind of correct that course 
unfortunately, games have been in development like Cyberpunk, um, where they've been working under crunch for like, you know, seven years, where they've had to change things so often. Although we've shifted to a movement where there shouldn't be crunch, I don't think we'll fully see any of those things that these studios are implementing or promising their team with like no crunch um, yeah. really happening until like a year or two from now. Here's like the just the biggest issue about it because I put out a tweet about this earlier today when I had saw the statement and I just given my thoughts on it. You know, I was mentioning the fact that like, damn, over the last five years, especially with The Witcher Three, CD Projekt Red had built such a rapport with their with their community. Yeah. You know, they, they built such a reputation. People are like, these are CD Projekt Red is among some of the greatest game developers that are working today, and for them to like let it all come crashing down with the release of probably one of the most anticipated games of all time mm -hmm. uh, is, is rough. It's rough. And a lot of people were coming at me because uh, myself as a content creator, I cover superhero games. I specifically covered Avengers. I had a lot of excitement for Avengers. Clearly that game suffered a very similar fate it was a game that needed more time to cook. It was a game that came out half baked and needed another year or so for it to be uh, more in more solid condition at launch right um but i I'll, I'll tell you what the huge difference between marvel's avengers and the release around that game and cyberpunk 2077 is that when crystal dynamics was supplying people with codes first of all a lot of people were able to play it on console number mm -hmm. one yep. number yeah. two they were able to use their own recorded gameplay and show for you that the game was a buggy mess and a lot of issues and they were able to review the game with that information right. they weren't allowed only pc copies of the game and they also weren't told that they can only use a b-roll as their footage for the review that yeah. is exact listen no matter which way you slice this i don't want to call out the developers because i feel for them and i know that a lot of them are going to be crunching for the next two months to get these bug fixes out there and these patches out there for the community but a lot of the higher ups at CD Projekt Red, they knew exactly what they were doing when they enforced those uh, those guidelines within the NDA or within the embargo, whatever it is that you may consider. All right, they knew that they had record pre-order numbers for Cyberpunk 2077, and that if people got to see that the game was buggy, if people like Malik, like you, who waited to see what people were saying about the game, who waited to see what it looked like when people were playing the game and not through promotional material, if they if they knew that people were going to see that before launch, a lot of those pre-orders would get canceled. So yeah. now we're in a situation where, yes, even with this statement and them saying that people are going to get refunds, that also involves people waiting on customer support for who knows, God knows how long, for people who who knows when they're going to get an email back about getting a right. refund for their copy. Mm -hmm. um, that that goes as well for people who may not be on the internet that much and may not even see this statement and know that they can get a refund. There is a yeah. lot of money that they made on Cyberpunk 2077 because they they purposefully deceived the community yeah. and they deceived the consumers by by yeah. locking some things behind those reviews and i don't care who you are you cannot defend that and people were no. trying to call me out for trying to like apparently blatant blindly defend avengers which i didn't do first of all but they're doing that as a defense for them blindly defending cyberpunk yeah you gotta yeah. call these guys out if you if we stop calling them out then Star Wars Battlefront 2 will keep happening. Sure. Yes. Uh, Fallout 76 yeah. will keep happening. Marvel's Avengers will keep happening. If if we don't call them out and criticize them, this is just going to keep happening to us. Your money yeah. is going to be wasted. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's such a complex thing because it's like, obviously it's black and white. Like, don't release a game if it's not ready, but it's complex because there's so many people that are involved in making a game. You have those people that make the decisions and, yeah. you know, we've seen it time and time again where they're making bad decisions. So yes, you need to call that out because that BS needs to stop. But then at the same time, these developers that work tirelessly mm -hmm. on releasing a For game sure. and having their work just be overlooked 
because yeah. of the negative press is mm-hmm. so unfortunate and unfair to them. And it's not something that I think the, you know, the community should put on themselves because yes, you've spent money to get a top tier quality game that isn't as buggy as it is on, yep. you know, last gen, uh, or, you know, so you need to call that out, but I do want to take a moment to talk about our experiences other than the bugs, because the three of us did play the game yeah, and right. it's a very ambitious game. There's so yeah. much in this world. And when you see it unfold, aside from the bugs, it has so much potential to be a great game. Yeah. And that's the thing that hurts the most is seeing all this, seeing uh, other people's experiences, seeing uh, like experiencing my own issues with the game. There's something really special with this, with cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, the world is amazing. The characters are very uh, enjoyable and enticing. Like I want to spend time with them. And some of the, the mechanics are really fun as well. But there's so many things wrong yeah. with the game. Uh, yeah. I, I put out a tweet like, a, a couple days ago where I was just walking down the street and cars were driving th- through a medium <laughs> exploding just one after <laughs> another, one after another. And it was like, okay. It, it often reminds me of a Skyrim or of a Fallout game where it's like, okay, these are just really bad bugs that aren't affecting my progression more or less but i know that it's just inconsistent across the uh the board like caboose you were t- telling me that you were driving down the street that you know just would crash your game other people they're getting yep. locked out of their games or save crashes stuff like that i'm not experiencing those but i think that's the worst part is that there's something really special here but not everyone's having that same experience that's and are you playing sorry right. are you playing on uh last series year? x series okay, x okay. I think that's that's also something uh, important to talk about is that people are experiencing different uh, issues, whether exactly on base mm-hmm. consoles, on new consoles, on PC, on high end PCs. People are having all mm-hmm. these different things happen depending on the hardware you're running in when yep. you're playing, I guess. I can count mm-hmm. on more than one hand the amount of bugs and glitches that I've run into that aren't mm-hmm. necessarily just like a texture pop in or right. a character disappear or like a, an NPC disappearing out of thin air, but bugs that straight up halt my experience with the game like yeah. like you mentioned steve i tweeted this uh, about 30 minutes before we went live i was playing a little bit uh cyberpunk and i was going to go buy a car in the game and there was a street that straight up unironically crashed my series x uh and i thought that maybe it was just a one-time occurrence and my series x just had an issue i booted it back up got back in the game went down that same street because it was the same waypoint and the, right. the Series X crashed again. So yeah. like the and and that's and that's like one of a dozen experiences that I've run into. There was also a side mission I did where I got locked in the room and the doors wouldn't open. And even even when I would skip 24 hours and stand there for 24 hours or something, nothing would ha- nothing would change. If I would quit out of the game and go back in, nothing would change. I had to load a save from 30 minutes prior and do the side mission all over again for mm-hmm. it to work properly. This like the, people just think you can't excuse this you can't right. just sit by and say well oh it's okay it's okay you know like and, and, for those, like, yeah. and for those of you as well who aren't experiencing issues like consider yourself lucky i'm glad you were able to enjoy the game but that doesn't mean you have to turn a blind exactly. eye yeah. to the glitches and the bugs and the issues that other people and a large majority of people are experiencing yeah. yeah, like speaking and- from uh, just one uh, quick thing, I just want to say that, yeah, speaking from my personal experience, I've only had two hard crashes. Uh, some again, some of my the bugs I've experienced have been like tongue in cheek, like the fact that like my pants weren't rendering, so I was running around, <laughs> you know, uh, pantsless for a while and stuff like that. But at the same time, like it's inexcusable like we're way past the days where the bethesda jank is like humorous where oh it's just a bethesda game it's not going to run properly we're way past that like we're spending 60 dollars on next gen products like we expect a lot more Mm -hmm. and even the smallest amount of bugs is something that we need to just start speaking with our wallets on yeah and i I think that's the thing right the point to drive home for these studios and to recognize is you as a developer may be making money in those initial costs, but um, in terms of when your game goes on sale mm-hmm. or pre-orders come out, but in the end you're losing so much because now anytime a CD Projekt Red game comes out, people are going to double guess it. When multiplayer yep. comes out yep. for Cyberpunk, people are going to double guess it. They're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to wait. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's so much at stake for these studios that they need to understand that 
Although we are passionate about our fandoms, we're passionate. We get excited when the new titles, um, you know, coming out, we get excited for all of everything. You know, we just eat all of the latest news out. We eat, you know, all the latest yeah. DLCs. We just want to get our hands on it. We are not going to stand for that and keep no. being abused and taken advantage of um, just because you feel no matter what, we're going to continue to throw our money at whatever you're selling. And, mm -hmm. you know, with, with Cyberpunk 2077, like it's just super unfortunate because now they not only put the reputation of their studio, but the yep. reputation of Keanu Reeves being involved in a video oh, game. No. Oh, true. no. He may <laughs> never want to do this again. <laughs> video game, don't expect Neo to make an appearance, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, I also want to make one last point. Sorry to cut yeah. you off, Steve. I want to no, make one okay. last point. And, and it's something yeah. that you were saying, Steve, in that mm. it's like, it's especially heartbreaking because when the game is running well and it's mm -hmm. working and you aren't running into glitches, it's pretty damn good. Uh, yeah. And that's from somebody who like kind of going into act two and, and putting a decent amount of hours into it. I was like, I don't know. Like, was this really the game that everyone was hyping it up to be like, granted, I wasn't like jumping in excitement for all eight years since the game was announced. I was really only like excited in the home stretch when the game is about to launch. Um, but I remember like putting a decent amount of hours and being like, I, I just don't know if I'm feeling this. Right. Um, but then eventually it starts to pick up and the story starts to get really interesting and you yeah. meet a ton of different characters. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like, I'm all in now. But in, and then that in that it's especially heartbreaking because in a game that's built on the immersiveness and, and being sucked into this world, running into a bunch of glitches and especially game breaking ones immediately kick you out of it. Uh, yeah. and, and that's, that's what's heartbreaking the most is because I want to keep playing. In fact, I'm itching to play it right now, yeah. but I know when I jump on in my session of playing it, yeah. I'm probably going to run into a bunch of bugs and glitches that'll ruin my experience. And that's so frustrating because yeah. the game does start off. It's a bit slower, um, at the beginning and it's a 20 hour campaign about, so it's like, it is slow at the beginning. And on top of that, if you do meet a glitch, it just makes it so frustrating to like continue going on your mission and like hoping that things are going to look out that it just feels like you're dragging it on for the mm. sake of experiencing cyberpunk. And it's like, mm. that's, that's something I never wanted to do as, you know, working in this industry or like being a, just even a fan of gaming. It's like, I never want to play a game and feel like I need to get through this game because everyone's talking about it sure mm -hmm. uh, the one other thing i just want to bring up i know we're running really late so i want to keep it short but a story i've been following since pretty much like when the show started was that uh on push square uh you know customers who were trying to get a hold of uh sony to get a refund on this game uh it turns out sony do psn doesn't have a refund system mm. really <laughs> Yeah, so uh, customer service are basically just saying like we can't accommodate you and give wow. you give you your money back. Uh, I'm just reading like some of these uh, people have uh, posted the, like their their chat uh, interactions with customer service, and they're like, uh, one in particular says, "I'm sorry, due to restrictions outlined in the uh, PlayStation Store cancellation policy, a refund cannot be made for this transaction." Another. Um, Customer service rep basically just said, well, CD Projekt Red promised a couple of large patches in January and February. You might just want to wait for those. That's rough. So, Brutal. yeah. So I, I, I just felt like it was, Yeah. I just thought it was, uh, you know, good for our audience to know. Like if you guys are really eager to uh, get your money back for this game uh, and you feel burned by CD Projekt Red, you might want to go through them rather than make sorry. sure yeah yeah harass them well don't harass them don't be like no, no be it. nice be nice um, i, I want to make that yeah, yeah. And, and i say i should say your emails they're not the per people that exactly. yeah, 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 yeah exactly so nice. i i mean harass them in the sense that like email them keep following up make sure your email is seen yeah. you know because mm -hmm. if you want your refund you got to go get it and that's the unfortunate process of this all is that even though they're offering a refund begin because of the times and you know, the environment that we're living in right now, that's just it's very difficult it's for people to difficult, run yeah. through these tickets. Um, but yeah, make sure you get your refund. And I guess as a general note too, like, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to be nasty to the developers, man. Like no. you, you, you can criticize a game and be like respectful about it. Don't be a tool 
you know, nobody who was developed in this game was out to get you or anything like that. Like they were, they were clearly trying to make a good game and it's not like it was the developer's decision to hide some of those things in the review or create some of those embargo guidelines. Um, But even then, like, just like, make sure you get your criticism across in a very respectful way, because otherwise like your criticism will not be received. If we're being honest, like saying game sucks, I hate you. Like, that information nothing could be taken in there to improve exactly. on you there's know? nothing right. constructive um, in that exactly. yeah make sure, so, like I, your teacher would say in school make sure you give some constructive criticism okay? yeah that's it right there i want to i just wanted to add my two cents as somebody who has not played the game yet but has watched probably close to 20 30 hours of the game is mm-hmm. that the Witcher was extremely broken when it first came out, uh, right. two and three especially. But now Witcher three is looked at as a definitive RPG experience, like mm-hmm. period, end of story. Yeah. For me personally, I am excited to see if they keep developing this game and keep building on it because I have friends who have done role playing campaigns, like tabletop versions of the cyberpunk world because it is such an in depth and, and crazy world. And for me personally, I'll go back and I'll play it with each iteration that they fix as they add more stuff, as they patch things. And I'll run through in the different career paths and I'll explore different things. Because like even seeing Arasaka like in the flesh was a crazy experience for me because it's this name that you hear whispers of throughout the cyberpunk world so far. So there is such a deep world and a deep story and so many things that they can do to improve it. It just sucks that it had to come out like this because I am a fan of the series and you know the world and the and everything that's involved with this has just Mm -hmm. come out to be such a dumpster fire and it's so sad to see and i really hope that people aren't being nasty towards the developers and understanding that it's going to take time and it's just unfortunate that the higher ups in the business aspect had to get in the way of the art right 100%. Definitely. 100%. All good points, everybody. Uh, you know what? We're, I feel like we're going to continue to follow this story as it evolves, and we're going to get maybe better news, hopefully better news, um, with where Cyberpunk is going, especially for its fans. But for now, that's it for us today. I'm going to ask uh, Steve, Malik, what articles do you guys have coming up? I mean, we're talking about Cyberpunk. Uh, that's why I'm planning on getting out there uh, this week. i uh, got some Cyberpunk articles coming coming at you so stay tuned yeah i'm hoping to uh hoping to get my hands on cyberpunk soon uh and start writing some articles about it uh other than that i got some genshin art uh, genshin impact articles live on the site as always you know we got lots of guides over there so go check that out a lot of other writers too write a lot of genshin impact content uh it's been really really awesome seeing that game grow so go check that stuff out uh you can follow me on twitter at malik shelp uh, i've been covering all the valorant news that's been going on all the tournaments that have been happening so yeah that's about it Nice. Awesome. And Caboose, how about you? Uh, just probably playing a little more Cyberpunk. I want to get to the end and see what ending I get. Um, and then besides that, still playing some more Mortal Kombat. Uh, playing some more Avengers with the newest DLC with Kate uh, Bishop. Yeah. Checking that out. Nice. I want to level her up and try and get some new gear. Um, and that's it. Just playing a couple of different games here and there. Trying out these next-gen consoles. Still tinkering with them. And counting down the days until 2021. So we can hopefully go into a fresh new year, an exciting yes. new year, and hoping that Gotham Knights comes out really quick. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, for myself, I'll be giving my Cyberpunk 2077 review on the show as well as playing it on the show. Um, and then also just playing lots of Cyberpunk as well. Um, I, I do want to try some of the different paths just because the, the world in the game is just very interesting. Um, but if I encounter too many bugs, maybe I'll just put it down for the rest of the year. <laughs> um, but for you guys at home, make sure that you tune into all of our articles at squadstate.com, our TV show squad on Amazon prime and super channel, as well as just all the things that we have going on, on our socials squad state on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you next week. Have a great week.